You know, when you read the book of Acts and you visualize these beautiful sailing vessels and this blue sea and this uh, area around Greece and these yeah. islands in the Mediterranean. The and you, uh, you see the, the, the beauty of what's going on here. Luke is a man who is saved. He is in a historically important time and place. And he is accompanying a man of destiny Shaul Paulos of Tarsus. And here, this little band of men are setting sail for this place, and then they are moving on to this place, then they're preaching at this place. And when you get your map out and you begin to imagine that you're with them, it's just the most beautiful and the most exciting thing you could ever think about. You could just almost taste the breeze coming off that beautiful green ocean. And uh, you can see that Luke, a man going to heaven, has various stopovers on his way to glory. And he's keeping a journal and he's writing this down. And of course, it's going to be of great importance because he's going to add it to his Basura Sageola. And we're going to have both of these volumes. And they're going to be right there in the middle of the Brit Hadashah, two of the most important books ever written by Lucas, the physician, the beloved position on his way to heaven and you know a lot of people when they retire they want to sit on a deck and they want to go on various cruises and tours and they want to see this beautiful sea and all of this and there's nothing wrong with that and uh, I know a lady who takes lots of literature with her and does those kinds of things and she's able to witness to a lot of people so, you know, it, it's, it's not a worldly thing at all necessarily, but what I'm trying to say here is, this man is on his way to heaven. He is born from heaven. He is gloriously saved. He has been placed by God uh, with these people of destiny in this historic time and place something wonderful, something almost unimaginably glorious on his way to heaven with these various stopovers. So in Acts chapter 20, verse 15, you see they're setting sail and you see uh, they're going from one place to another and it mentions Miletus. Then in Acts chapter 20, verse 17, a couple of verses later, uh, at Miletus, they call for the, the Zikonim, the elders, the, the, the leaders. And these men who have a responsibility to keep watch over various congregations uh, have a little rendezvous with Rob Shaul. And of course, he's on his way uh, to a martyrdom in Rome, where he will be killed for the gospel. He will die off Kiddush Hashem. Nero will have his head cut off. But all of that is a, a, a ways in the future. So. Rob Shaul is not quite ready to go to heaven yet. He has work to do. And one of the things is to meet with these leaders and give them a very important exhortation. And Luke here is an eyewitness of this. 
and he's keeping a journal and he's writing it down. So the, this is two mentions of a place called Miletus. Then when Rav Shaul is ready to be martyred al Kedish Hashem, he mentions Miletus in passing. He's telling Timothy where everybody is. Various ones, he had to assign various duties to go here, to go there, to preach the gospel, whatever. And he mentions that he left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Now, when you think of sickness, some of these health and wealth preachers treat this as, you know, it's, you, you really have to be, you're, you must be either not a believer or a very weak believer to have any sickness at all. It's just, it's just not supposed to be part of the picture for a believer. But Rob Shaul makes no apologies about this. The man was sick. And, you know, in our lifetime, we may have various illnesses and healings and more illnesses and more healings. And the Lord is able to deliver us. But, you know, there's that last time when you don't get the healing, when you go to heaven, if you're a believer, there's a healing that goes beyond this body. It's an eternal spiritual healing where you have a spiritual body that's given to you to replace this corruptible mortality that you have. And this body is fit for eternity. You will never be sick in this body and you will never need healing in this body. This body is fit for walking around on the streets of gold in the new Jerusalem. It's a body that Yeshua himself modeled for the believers. And they saw it and they testify what we've seen with our eyes, what we've gazed at, what our hands have touched, we declare to you. And they, he's referring there to this body, this glorious body. So even if Trophimus is sick, and even if he's going to leave this world, he has a wonderful thing that's on his mind that he was with Rav Shaul. And yes, he had to be left at Miletus and he had to be left sick. But he also, like Paul, had a glorious time. Now, you know, we don't know uh, how long we have in this world. But I want to thank God that for a a little time in the summer of 2021, even with sickness, even with hard times, we had the privilege of working with some key people, some people of destiny who are doing historical work to get the Bible in the languages of every person on earth all 6,500 languages will have a Bible. And these people are going to get it done. And we had the privilege of rubbing shoulders with them like Trophimus did with Rav Shaul, even though he was sick and could not continue the journey. And we want to thank God. And that's why we're having this nightly Azusa Street Revival Prayer Meeting. One of the reasons is to offer up thanksgiving. Someone was sick, had to go in an ambulance, but they got a good report from the doctor. So we give God 
the glory. We give God the thanks. Someone else had another problem, but again, God came to their rescue. And you know, whether you're sick or well, the question is, what are you doing with your life? God wants you to do great things. God says, and, and you know, a saying of William Carey, the father of modern outreach, worldwide outreach, uh, uh, believe great things for God and expect great things from God. And so he had his setbacks. If, if you read his, his story, his life story, you'll see he had some problems. Uh, and not everything that he did uh, lasted. Some of his manuscripts fell into the water and were ruined. But nevertheless, he was given a great vision. And he was able to accomplish a great deal of it. And he had people with him who were people of destiny. And that's the glorious thing. Yes, Miletus was, uh, was a place where Trophimus was sick. Uh, and while Paul is writing about this, Paul is in, a, in, in, in his own way, uh, very much in a uncomfortable position. He's cold. He, he's uh, winter is coming. He doesn't have his cloak. He he's asking for it. Uh, he knows he could be killed at any time. Uh, he's expecting martyrdom. He says, "I fought the good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished the race. And now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge." will award to me and not to me only, but to all who have loved his appearing. So while he's talking about Trophimus being sick and having to leave him in Miletus, he's also thinking about his own situation uh, where this mortal is going to be laid aside, this tent, and immortality is going to be put on. There's a change of, of garment. The, the garment of mortality is going to be uh, switched out with the garment of immortality. And even though he lacks a garment and wants his cloak, which he doesn't have, and it's getting cold and winter is coming, nevertheless, there is a change of, of, of garment that's coming, not only for Paul, but also for Trophimus, that he had to leave sick in Miletus. So whether we're well or sick, whether we're in the body or out of the body, we belong to the Lord, we praise the Lord, we look to the Lord, he is our source, he is our healer. Yes, we have faith for healing, we have faith for miracles, we cry out to the Lord. But what, what did Job say? Even though he slay me, yet will I serve him. So we want to give God the praise and all the glory tonight. And we want to offer thanksgiving to God that he has allowed us to come to the summer of 2021 and uh, to rub shoulders with people uh, who are doing a great work and to try to help them uh, somewhat, uh, even with the Yiddish uh, Breed Hadashah. Lord, I want to pray right now that people who are listening to this and they know that they've got a tight grip on their life and that they're trying to do their own thing. And it says, whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. But who, whoever loses his life for my sake will keep it. Lord, I want to pray that these people will come under conviction and they will realize that whatever they're trying to do with their life, they need 
to turn it over to the Lord and let him do something with their life. Because if they hang on to it, they won't be able to do anything of any importance. But if they give him their life, he will give it back to them. Pressed down, shaken together, exceedingly abundantly more than they could ever ask or think. And they, their life will be uh, so much more meaningful and they will see the fruit of God's grace operating, which they would never have seen had they held on to their life to selfishly live it on their own terms. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've all gone our own way. There is a way that seems right to a man, but that way, way ends in death. God created us upright, but we have gone after many schemes. We need to turn over to the Lord and do what Luke did because he had given his life to the Lord. He was going to serve the Lord as a physician, as a journalist, as a writer, as a helper and companion of Rob Shaul. He was going to do whatever he could to preach the gospel. He was going to keep a record of these very important things that were transpiring that he was an eyewitness of. Uh, all the we sections in the book of Acts, he's actually there writing it down, keeping a journal. And then this glorious voyage that even though it looks like a disaster, God even saves Paul and everyone on the ship. Paul does get to Rome. He does fulfill his ministry. All these things are written down. We have the Breed Hadashah, a glorious book, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, probably the greatest book ever written. What a privilege to put it into Yiddish, or at least try to. And Lord, we want to pray right now that somebody will give their life to the Lord, that somebody will pray, Yeshua, I believe you are the Mashiach. Forgive me for any time I ever said Yushka or Yeshu or, or blasphemed or insulted your name. There's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Your name is beautiful. I, I, I believe you, Lord, that you died for me, that you made the, the Korban Kippur for my sins. I receive you right now. I confess you before men, no matter what the cost. I live for you now. I turn my life over to you. I make tishuva, and I make a total turnaround that I'm going to live from now on for you. What, what a disaster it would have been if Luke had said, you know, I can make money as a physician. I'll just stay here in, in Antioch or Syria or wherever he was. I'm not going to go with Paul. I'm not going to keep a journal. I'm not going to write these things down. I'm going to live a selfish little life trying to make as much money as I can in the medical field. What a disaster it would have been and how he would have lost out and God would have used somebody else to give us this record that we have. And I thank you, Lord, for the little uh, mention of Miletus three times. Acts chapter 20, verse 15, Acts chapter 20, verse 17, and 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse, verse uh, 20. And Lord, I pray right now that somebody will pick up the Bible tonight and read this part of the book of Acts and imagine the glory of going on a Shalikas journey to the ends of the earth, not to preach a false Mashiach moldering in the grave in Old Montefiore Cemetery, but to preach a living Savior. The Zunfunderoyvister of the living God, the Elohim Hayim, Hashem, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we'll give you all the praise.